What's up, you freaking geniuses? So in this video, I'm going to teach you how to find the least common denominator or the lowest common denominator of a group of rational expressions. All right. Now, in order to find the LCD of two rational expressions like this, all you have to do is break the denominators, okay, down here into their factors. Okay. So first of all, let's start with just breaking down the numbers, right? Finding the factors of the numbers. And to do that, we're going to use the factor tree method. So first of all, let's start with 12 right here. All right. What are two numbers I can multiply together to get 12? Well, I can break that down into two times six, right? And then remember, you just circle your prime numbers. So two, that's a prime number, so we'll circle it. Six, we can keep breaking down though, right? We can break that down into two times three. And then here, two and three are both primes, so we'll circle both of those, okay? So we broke down 12, now let's move on to 21 over here. What are two numbers I can multiply together to get 21? Well, the only ones I can really choose from are three times seven, right? And both of these are primes, so we'll circle both of those, okay? Now, if I want to find the lowest or the least common denominator, all I need to do is multiply all the prime factors together, okay? But if I have any duplicates between these two right here, I'm only going to write it once, okay? So let me show you what I mean. So first of all, uh, starting over here, we have a two, a two, and a three, right? So we're gonna write two times two times three, okay? But notice we have a three over here and we have a three on this side over here, right? So since we have a three on this side and a three on this side, I'm only going to write it once. And then the only other prime factor we have is this seven right here. So we'll include that also. Okay, now the last thing we have to do here is find the LCD between x to the sixth and x to the fourth, okay? Basically just the remaining variables at the bottom, okay? Now, the way you do that is you basically just pick the bigger one. So here we have x to the sixth. This is x to the fourth. Well, six is bigger than four, obviously, right? So you would basically just choose x to the sixth, okay? So you'd literally just multiply by x to the sixth, okay? Not too bad, right? So then we can simplify the LCD here. So we'll say that the LCD is equal to, now we can just combine all this right here. So Two times two, that's equal to four. And then four times three is equal to 12. And then 12 times seven is equal to 84. Okay? And then we just have this x to the sixth at the very end. x to the sixth. Okay? So your LCD between these two denominators right here would just be 84x to the sixth. Hopefully that wasn't too bad. We're gonna try just a couple more examples that are gonna be just a little bit harder. Okay, so here is our next example. All right, so if we wanna find the LCD between both of these, again, we're just focusing on the denominators, right? So first of all, we can start by finding just the LCD of the numbers. So we'll start by finding the least common denominator between 24 and 20, all right? And again, I'm gonna do that by breaking each of them down into their factors. So let's do a factor tree for each of those. So we're gonna break down 24 and 20, right? So first of all, 24, I can break that down into four times six, okay? Neither of these are prime, so we can keep going. Four, I can break down into two times two. Six, I can break down into two times three, okay? All of these are prime, so I can circle all of those, right? And then we can do the same thing with 20. Uh, 20, I can break down into four times five. Uh, five is prime, so we'll circle that. And then four, again, we can break that down into two times two, right? So then we'll circle each of those, okay? So finding the LCD between those two, we'll multiply it out, okay? So here we have two, a two, a two, and a three, right? And on this side, we have a two, a two, and a five. Okay, so remember, if you have anything that's similar between both of these on both sides, you only write it down once, okay? So for example, we have a two here, we have a two here. So we'll only write that down once, 
okay? We have a two here, we have a two here. So we'll only write that down once, okay? We have this other two here, so we can write that down. Uh, we have a three here, uh, so we'll write that down. And then we have a five here, so we'll, we'll write that down, right? None of those had a pair, so those just go down by themselves. Okay, so we just found the LCD between the two numbers, right? So now we just have to do it for the variables over here. But if you notice, we have two different variables, right? We have an X and a Y on both sides, all right? But the process is still the same, all right? So let's just start with the X's first. So first of all, here we have an X, which is basically the same thing as X to the first power, right? And on this side, we have an X to the fifth, okay? So again, just write down the bigger one. So here, X to the fifth is the bigger one, right? So we're gonna write down times X to the fifth, okay? And you do the same thing with the Y's. So here we have a Y cubed. Here we just have a Y, which again is basically the same thing as Y to the first power, right? So the bigger one would be Y to the third power, right? So we're just gonna write down times Y to the third power, right? Thankfully, those are not too hard to deal with, right? So now we just have to simplify this. So now the LCD is gonna be equal to so two times two, that's equal to four, and then four times two, that's equal to eight, all right? So these three right here are equal to eight, and then I'll skip a little bit. So eight times five, that's equal to 40. So 40 times three is equal to 120, okay? And then we just have our variables right here, so times x to the fifth times y cubed, right? So x to the fifth, y cubed. All right, so then that would be the LCD right there. All right, let's do one last example. Now again, to find the LCD, we're just focusing on the denominators, right? And in this case, we don't have to use a factor tree because we have some trinomials down here, right? So whenever you have something like this, when you have trinomials, all you have to do is factor them, all right? So let's start here, x squared minus two x minus three, let's factor this. Well, first of all, again, it's a quadratic, and it has a leading coefficient of one. So I know I can break it down into two sets of parentheses like this, right? And then here I have an x squared, so I can put an x there and an x there. And then to figure out the numbers right here, just look at your last number right there. It's a negative three, okay? What two numbers can I multiply together to get negative three, but they have to add up to this middle number right here, negative two? Well, that would be a negative three and a positive one right, because negative three times one is negative three, and negative three plus one is equal to negative two, right? So these are the two numbers we're going to plug in. So minus three plus one, okay? And then we can come over here and do the same thing and factor this, right? Again, I have a leading coefficient of one, so we can just factor this like that, right? So we have an x squared, so I'll put an x there and an x there. And again, to figure out the numbers, look at your last number right there. So this time it's a positive three, right? So what two numbers can I multiply together to get positive three and have to add up to the middle number positive four? Well, that would, in this case, it would just be a three and a one, right? Because three times one is three and three plus one is equal to four. So these are the two numbers we're gonna use, right? Positive three, positive one. So plus three plus one. Okay, so we just broke everything down into its factors, right? This denominator over here, we broke down into these two factors right there, x minus three and x plus one. And this denominator, we broke it down into x plus three and x plus one, right? These two right here, okay? So what would the LCD be equal to? Well, again, for the LCD, you just multiply out all the factors, right? But remember, if you have anything similar on one side as you do on the other side, you only write it down once, okay? So first of all, uh, we have an x minus three here, so that's one of the factors, right? So let's put that here, x minus three. And then we're gonna multiply that by x plus one, right? This is another factor that we have. But if you notice, we have an x plus one on this side, and we also have an x plus one on this side, right? So since it's on both sides, I'm only gonna write it down once, right? So we're only gonna write it down x plus one, we're only writing it down one time, all right? And then lastly, this is my only other factor, right? x plus three, so we'll write that down also, x plus three. 
Now, with the last problems, we would normally multiply everything together, whatever we got here for our factors, right? But whenever you're dealing with like factoring out quadratics and trinomials and stuff like that, it's normally more useful to just leave it like this, okay? So you can see each of the factors. So we're gonna say that this is our final answer. So if you found the video helpful, definitely leave a thumbs up down below. And if you have any other questions or wanna see any other examples, just let me know in the comment section below. Also, there's a couple playlists attached that I think you'll find helpful. So definitely check those out and I'll see you there.